All right, friends, welcome back to a little coffee club. Uh, the long wait for the niche duo has finally ended. I finally have received my niche duo. We're going to unbox it and I'll give you a little bit of my first impressions on it. Uh, I'll try to set it up on the counter and give you guys another uh, maybe shot or two. And then what I plan on doing is recording one of those little cinematic kind of uh, videos that I like recording. And I'm going to give you guys that first before showing you this unboxing video. Uh, so you will see that little cinematic before seeing this. And I'm not sure if today I'm going to end up recording uh, maybe brewing coffee with it or uh, where this is going to go from here. But, um, you know, there's a chance that uh, this video might get recorded in two different days or whatever. For you guys, it'll be a seamless kind of process. But <laughs> just keep in mind, uh, I might have recorded uh, in two different days. So you might see a couple different setups on the counter and things like that. Uh, but yeah, let's get into the box. Uh, I can't wait to see it. Let's unbox the niche duo. Man, finally. The long wait is finally over. So let's get into it. Okay, so I think last time it was the same kind of thing. Box in a box. Uh, it got shipped through DHL. Um, I, received it, I received it ahead of schedule, but it still was a long, a long wait. It took like two months for me to finally receive the, the niche duo. And, and man, I am excited. Let's get into it. I bought it with the two burrs, by the way. I do have the brew burrs and I do have the espresso burrs. It comes when you order it with both burr sets, it's going to come with the espresso burrs already installed. So uh, obviously my first video I'm going to record with it is going to be uh, espresso focused. So we'll first try it as, as espresso. Uh, we're also going to do before I change the burst on it. I do plan on doing a comparison, a taste comparison between the niche duo and the niche zero, which I also own. Uh, we'll brew espresso, the same uh, beans uh, ground on the two different uh, grinders and taste it and see if I can taste any difference. You guys have seen me already, you know, try to compare grinders and I really can't taste the difference in grinders. But now that I have a flatbird grinder, maybe that's going to change everything. We'll see. Maybe I'll be able to taste a difference. Maybe not. But at least you're going to get the, you know, my point of view, which is like an average consumer point of view. And if you're just a hobbyist, kind of like an average consumer like myself, you don't have the perfect taste buds in the world and you're not an expert, then perhaps... I can give you some insight as to whether it's worth getting a dual if you already own a zero and you know i'll give you my take on it so let's uh let's open it up let's see what we got oh by <laughs> by the way it's quite heavy it's uh, a lot heavier than i was expecting the box to be so i remember when i received the zero i was taken by how small it looked i expected it to be a lot bigger uh, this i expected it to be a lot lighter but it's kind of a little bit heavy Okay, that's gonna be the easiest way okay so there we have the next box down let's get into this one and take a look what does it say flawless filter exceptional espresso ah, you couldn't expect anything less guide ranges for each burst set all right Little manual right on the top. Oh, it's got a little, so you could take it out of the box. That's pretty handy. All right, so there it is. Uh, let's see, how do we get this uh, strap off? We might actually have to cut it off. Okay, I'm not gonna struggle anymore with that. I'm just gonna cut that strap off. I wish I had somebody here helping me with uh, the cameras and stuff, but hopefully everything is in focus and you guys are getting a good view of this. But yeah, we're gonna have to cut that off. Oh, it said something about this side up. Okay, this side up. <laughs> All right, there we go. Okay, here's the other the other uh, burst set. Okay, here's the the dual. Okay. 
Okay, and there it is. Okay, get the strap out of here. All right, so you guys saw the little manual. We also have the little, uh, you know, this little plate that always comes with the, with the niche. You put it here to put the catch, the catch cup on top. This one also comes with a catch cup. And you get the usual suspects. Uh, you get the one tool that you need to remove the burrs uh, so that you can change them out. And you get a little brush, just like previously. Oh, and I see this one brings a little tube of something here. This it could be the lubricant that they recommend to put on the, when you remove this, this part of it. I showed you guys in a previous video that they recommend to keep that um, with a little bit of lube on it so it's nice and smooth and uh, protects from uh, perhaps rusting or anything like that. But all right, so anyway, you, you do get a little, uh, I mean, I'm gonna read this. I'll, I'll tell you guys in a second. All right, so exactly, uh, I couldn't see it without my, <laughs> I mean, it's pretty large writing and I still couldn't see it without my glasses. So it says thread grease and <laughs> Uh, 10 grams of that. So, all right, so let's take a look in here. Man, guys, I do, I do say I miss having my uh, perfect eyesight. Okay, hopefully that's focused there and you guys could see that well. All right, I do have two cameras running so you can get a little bit two different angles and hopefully everything is, uh, like I said, hopefully everything's in focus. All right, so let's see. You know what, I better, <laughs> I'm trying to do this without my glasses on. Okay, here we go. All right, we got a little something to remove from here. A little sticker. Okay, that's just a little tape. All right, so in here, this one is, uh, it's black. I've seen a lot of people, okay, so this one's blue. So it looks like the espresso ones are black and the brew ones are blue. Let's take a look at the burrs. Nice large burrs. These are 83 mil. There you see the burr set. Hopefully that's focused for you guys. But anyway, we're gonna do lots more videos. Guys, if you uh, are new to the channel, consider joining us here. Uh, we're gonna compare. One of the very first things I'm gonna do is compare the Niche Duo and the Niche Zero in regards to espresso. See if I could taste any difference. Again, I doubt it. That's not the reason why I bought it. You know, we are hobbyists and we, you know, part of, uh, I mean, if you're big time into coffee, like a lot of you guys are, if you're watching this, you probably are really into coffee. I think it's kind of uh, essential to have one nice conical burr grinder and one, one nice flat burr grinder. My favorite electric grinder is the Niche. And of course, when they came out with the Duo, I had to get it. All right, so as far as the unboxing experience, there you see it. Not a lot to it, but I'm gonna get it up to the counter, get it all set up. I'm gonna record the cinematic that you guys will see, uh, you know, pretty much as, eh, well, I received this just before leaving on, on vacation. The night before I left on vacation, I received the Niche Duo. All I could do was bring it in the house and put it here on the floor and wait until I had a chance to record this. Uh, I got back from vacation a week later. I spent a whole week working and trying to catch up at work and I had zero time to record anything. So now it's the next weekend. So two weeks, I've had this on the floor here for two weeks and I hadn't taken a look at it, if you could believe that. But the time has finally arrived. Let me get it up to the counter, get it all set up. I'm gonna record, I'm really excited to record this nice little cinematic. Uh, you know, I'm probably gonna end up making some espresso because it's, if I wanna record a nice little video, I have to brew coffee with it, right? So since it has the uh, espresso burst already installed, I'm probably gonna pull a shot of espresso, put it all together in a little cinematic video for you guys. And then another different day, uh, I'll record the rest of this video and perhaps, uh, you know, give you guys <laughs> what I think about it so far. And we'll get, we'll start deep diving into it. 
So let's, let's do that. Let's do that. So thank you guys for joining me here. For you guys, it'll just be one seamless experience, one long video. I'm glad to be here with you guys as always. I appreciate you guys a whole bunch. Uh, please join us here for some more fun videos between the Niche Duo, the Niche Zero, the K Plus, um, hand grinder that I also own. Maybe we'll even bring out the, the Breville Smart Grinder Pro and compare all of these things and see if I could taste any difference. Uh, and, and yeah, we'll get into all of that. So join us here. Uh, please give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and let's get it up to the counter and brew some espresso. Hello friends, welcome back to a little coffee club. It is now the day after I recorded the unboxing. I woke up to a nice chilly morning today. Uh, it's really nice and chilly. Well, for us here in South Florida, that means we are below 60. <laughs> but yeah, it's nice and nice and cool outside. And yeah, I wanted to film the rest of this video for you guys. Uh, we're gonna grind some coffee. Yesterday I did uh, dial in the Good Brothers Congo Kivu and the Niche Duo. And I tried my very first shot from it. You know, right off the bat, I can't say that it, there's a, like a, a noticeable difference to me <laughs> between, uh, you know, a shot I've pulled previously on the Niche Zero and the Niche Duo. But again, we're going to have to do a side by side on it. And I will film that video on a different day. But today I'll give you my first, uh, my first thoughts, my first impressions of it. Uh, we'll grind some coffee and pull a shot of the Congo Kivu. So yesterday when I recorded that cinematic scene that by now you should have seen weeks ago. I had to pull three shots to actually get it right. I started at grind size 12, I went down to eight, I ended up at four. And even at four, the shot pulled, I believe it was 35 seconds. I would like to slow it down a little bit more. So I now set the grinder at three and we're gonna grind at three. Now that's not like a huge range there, right? Be, you know, zero to three, you know, Again, I, I, I'm just giving you my first thoughts. I haven't done a deep dive into like into the manual or looking at a bunch of videos as to, you know, people talking about other than some reviews that I have seen. And I don't recall anybody saying anything about there being a very like short range for dialing in the espresso. But I'm just telling you what I what I found so far. Now, I'm pretty sure I can go below zero and still the birds are not touching. So maybe I should recalibrate it. I did look into that and it said that, you know, the grinder comes calibrated from factory. You shouldn't have to do anything, but who knows? Maybe I should calibrate it so that my range moves up a bit. But regardless, I think the, you know, the range for dialing in espresso on the niche duo is going to be probably around 10 clicks, uh, you know, somewhere below 10 and probably below zero. So once I graduate, once I maybe take a look at the calibration, maybe readjust that a little bit so that it goes from like zero to 10, something like that, uh, that should give you enough range. Uh, being a stepless grinder, you can make very tiny adjustments and get it to, you know, right to what you're looking for, get it just right. I didn't have any problem dialing in my first shot. Uh, again, it was, it took me three tries and I got it really nice. Now today, hopefully it slows down by about I don't know, five to 10 seconds, something like that. That's what I'm looking for. I would like to uh, do like a 20 second pre-infusion and like a 40 second shot, something like that. That's how I dialed it in on the Niche Zero and it was just very, very tasty. So to me, that's where it's at. So let's try to do that. Let's go to the other counter and then we'll talk about it a little bit more. So as you guys see there, I still have the same little setup from when I did uh, the little cinematic yesterday. By now, like I said, you guys should have seen that already weeks ago. But, you know, I wanted to record my reaction to the, to the grinder and, you know, brew our first shot and put everything together uh, as one video. So you guys, um, so you guys, you know, get my first impressions. So let's talk about the very first thing that I noticed. So. First of all, there you see the two grinders. 
I gotta say, the Niche Zero still has a soft spot in my heart. I still kind of like that one better. It's, you know, when I first bought it and I received it, I was taken by how small it is. Let me get my machine going again here, it timed out. Okay, so, you know, I was taken by how small it is, how cute and everything looks. It's, you know, it's so solid and, but yet compact and capable and just, you know, I just really like it. I like that one better than, than the Duo. The Duo is kind of big in comparison. I mean, you know, in person, you know, it's not that much of a big deal. Like, people wouldn't notice, but of course you're gonna notice, it's your grinder, but like visitors to your house and stuff, they would never notice, <laughs> okay? But yeah, we, you know, I, I like the Niche Zero better, the way it looks. Okay, now, uh, the space in the counter, you know, I have 19 inches of counter from my, from my countertop here to the top of the cabinets, there's 19 inches exactly. And look at my clearance here, okay? I want, I want you guys to see this. You know, I didn't even think I was gonna make it. Look, look at there's like a millimeter. I mean, there's nothing there. It, okay, that's at its closest. <laughs> it doesn't quite touch, but you know what? <laughs> it touches a little bit on the, on the pod here, on the pod light, but I can move it off a little bit and it doesn't actually touch the cabinet. But I mean, the clearance is on my cabinets and I have, again, 19 inches. Okay, 19 inches from the countertop to the, to the cabinets. And wow, it barely clears. You need that as a bare minimum. If you have anything less than that, you won't be able to open the lid all the way. Okay, so that's, that's the first thing. Look on the zero. There's a ton of space. There's inches there. I don't know, two, three inches. On here, I have nothing. Okay, I have exactly what I need. Then also to read you know, my setting, I kind of have to angle the, the grinder forward or I'm going to have to sit it, um, you know, closer to the closer to the edge of the counter here because like for me to read the setting, it's a little bit uncomfortable. I kind of have to angle it forward like this so I could take a, a good look. If not, I, I can guess at it, but I don't know exactly where I'm at. So right now I know I'm at three and a half and originally I was at four. So I tweaked it a little bit. I want to extend my brew time by five to 10 seconds. Um, what else should I tell you? So yeah, you know, I still kind of like the niche zero a little bit better than, <laughs> but you know, I gotta, I gotta have those flat bursts. And once I finish with a little bit of experimentation as far as espresso, okay? So if you guys want me to talk about espresso, please comment on this video because, you know, Pretty soon I'm gonna swap out the, the burrs on it and go to the brew burrs. And I don't want to be swapping burrs in and out all the time. I mainly want to make filter coffee uh, for pour overs with the Duo and keep the Zero for my espresso. So that's my plan and that's what I wanna do. So if you wanna see something in regards to the Niche Duo and espresso, leave a comment below and I'll make sure to like mention it on a video or reply to you, or you know I reply to everyone. So just comment below. All right, so that's kind of like my first take on it. Let's, uh, let's, you know, let's pull a shot and see, so you guys could see, <laughs> so you guys could see the, the whole thing here. What about the, the sound? Okay, here's the, you know, people have done this test before, but here you go. Okay, that's the duo. That's the zero. It sounds to me like the RPM on the Duo is a little bit faster and uh, the pitch of the sound on the zero, I have mentioned it before. To me, it's like the nicest sounding grinder out there. Uh, you just get that deep growl instead of like that screechy kind of sound. And on the Duo, you get a little bit more screechiness. So you're gonna lose a little bit on the pitch as well. Um, so yeah, I think grinding on the zero is overall a little bit, a little bit nicer, I should say. <laughs> you know, it, listen, I'm nitpicking here. This is a, almost no difference, but I'm nitpicking. But you know, you gotta start somewhere, right? So you guys comment and let, let me know. Okay, so we're gonna grind some coffee and pull a shot. All right, so here we go, pulling our very first shot here uh, for you guys. It, well, obviously the first one was on that cinematic clip, but the first one when I'm really talking to you guys. So let's dose out our 18 grams. Really excited about this. Here we go.
You know, I'm getting more aroma from this coffee like now than when I first opened it. That doesn't make any sense. It must be my nose. <laughs> I can't, I, that's probably not happening. Again, but remember, the laws of physics don't apply in my kitchen. Things work a little bit different here. Okay, so there you have it, 17.9. It was at 18, so it's fluctuating between 17.9 and 18. There you see it. So let's see what we get out as far as retention. I imagine it being something like on the niche zero, which, uh, you know, retention is not a, a big deal. Most of the time you'll get a 0 0.1, 0 0.2, or you get it spot on. You know, the same thing you put in is what you get out. Again, I don't, <laughs> you know, this could change in the future because, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> There's been like some, some crazy things happening here with like dust flying and, and the little flakes and the mess. And you guys know, I might have to start doing some uh, RDT. So, you know, I'm going to try to not do that, but if I have to, I will. Okay, so here we go, 18 grams. Yeah, I'd rather not do RDT. I don't know what that's going to do to the equipment. And, you know, I don't know. People say it doesn't do anything. Cool. So if I have to, I will do RDT, but it had never been an issue. I never get a mess, but now, you know, I don't know if it's because it's a uh, cooler temperature or, but you know, inside the house, it's always the same. There's always AC. It doesn't, it shouldn't matter. Okay, here we go. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on with the loss of physics, friends. But uh, another thing is here on the duo, when you put the beans in, they just kind of sink all the way in. You cannot see them. When you put them on the zero, you could see them still on top here. So I always show you the, uh, the roast level. You could really see it there because the light hits like, you know, right on. But now they kind of sink all the way in there. Okay. And you see there's, this one's a little bit more messy. I do have to say the duo so far has been a little bit more messy than the zero. <laughs> so we'll see. Let's see what happens today. Okay, we're done. So another thing is, although it seems like it's, to me, it seems like it's spinning faster than the zero. I haven't looked at that, but I'm pretty sure it is. The RPM is higher. Uh, it takes longer to grind. Okay, let's start it one more time like I always do. Tap the little spout, see if we got our 18 grams. All right, here we go. Okay, so we had like, a, well, we were between 17, uh, and 9 and 18 now we're at 17 7 maybe we lost like a 0.2 maybe even a little bit more than 0.2 but i'm not gonna worry about that i'm gonna roll with this ah shouldn't <laughs> maybe for the first time we should try a little plunger on the door why not let's let's do it let me let me get it okay so we're gonna try the little bellows thing so some nice control plunges hopefully we don't get a mess Okay, a few plunges. We do have a couple little flakes flew out. I got, I do have to say. Not a lot, not a big mess. Uh, another thing is like, <laughs> you know, and previously I said, man, I don't know why Lance says that things, you know, land on the on the lip here. Uh, but, on, you know, on the, on the zero, it just never happens. On, on, at least for me, it never, that never happens. Now you're seeing it on the duo. So perhaps when you go to like drier environment or something, maybe that's common. And it just is, you know, in my experience, it doesn't, doesn't happen much. All right, so we came up pretty much to what we had, 17.9. So we're gonna roll with this now for sure. Uh, there is a couple little flakes that flew out here, but there's nothing here and there's nothing in the, in the back of it. Like usually flakes land there. There's nothing there. It, you know, overall, eh, you know, pretty much the same experience like the zero. Okay, I'm nitpicking here. Yeah, be expecting to have the same workflow and pretty much the same experience as on the zero. Now let's see what happens with flavor. Like I said, I've never been able to taste difference in grinders. Put this thing away. I've never been able to taste the difference in grinders. We'll see now. Now that I have a proper flat burr grinder, maybe I'll be able to taste a difference. So that will be the, maybe the next video to this one. We'll pull shots on both the zero and the duo and see compare and see if I could taste any difference. But again, my whole intent with this is to keep the duo for my pour overs and the zero for my espresso. So let's let's move on. Let's do some pot prep. 
All right, so let's get this thing going here and do some puck prep. Now some quick uh, WDT here in the cup, fluff it up, as we always do. Now everything should be warmed up. Yeah, and it's, it's dry, but it's a little bit, there's some condensation in here. Okay, that should be good. Okay, there you have it. Okay, I'm gonna set up the camera angle a little bit different here. Okay, now we go with this angle so you guys can see the rest of the prep. Now we go to the Pasado. <laughs> oh man, Pasado. Pasado, make me my tamping station. I really need that. One of these days, guys, I'll give up on waiting and I'll order something. We'll see. Oh, by the way, I got work from, from Voitech. By the time that you guys see this, who knows? Maybe I already received it. I already recorded. I already, who knows? But our friend here on the channel, uh, Voitech, you know, he's up in Canada. He's over there, I think, uh, same city where uh, September Coffee is at. But he's gonna send me some beans. You know, he started roasting, so uh, he got a nice, uh, beautiful little machine for roasting small batches at home. He started roasting, and we're gonna review one of his coffees, I believe. So hopefully, hopefully that happens. We'll see. <laughs> Shout out to Wojtek. Let me clean up a little bit. Clean up a little bit, guys. You know, I like keeping it tidy. So yeah, shout out to Wojtek. Let me check my focusing again. And remember to check focus has been a game changer. All right, so what are we gonna tamp with today? Should we go with Pasado? Should we risk it? Yes, let's go with Pasado. <laughs> oh my goodness. Pasado, why does it always come out crooked? <laughs> why can't I learn? Well, somebody told me that maybe I'm tamping too hard. Uh, you know, as far as tamping uh, pressure, uh, you know, just try to keep it the same. You know, I, I, I think, I don't think I tamp like super hard, but uh, who knows? According to the, the person, you know, maybe I tamp uh, a bit too, too hard and, uh, you know, maybe that's not a good thing. I don't know, but my understanding is that you really can't tamp like too hard eh, or too soft. I mean, too soft maybe, but <laughs> too hard, not really, because you can only compact the, the puck so much. And then, uh, you know, as long as you keep it consistent, every time you tamp hard, then that's fine. But, you know, I have been experimenting with tamping a little bit lighter of a tamp. And, you know, I haven't noticed any pluses or minuses. Uh, like you guys know, the, you know, channeling has been very under control. We don't rarely get any kind of visual channeling. I know that internally, you know, channeling is unavoidable and it's happening. But, you know, as far as like visual kind of channeling, it's just, it's not a thing here, so. All right, uh, let me put the puck screen. Okay. And let's lock it in and then we'll pull a shot. All right, guys, here we go. I got all the cameras set up, all the angles. Everything is running, I'm checking, let me see. Yeah, I think everything's running. Hopefully there's no glitches or any problems. All right, we're gonna keep going with the time more. Let's get it going. All right, so it hasn't let us down. And you know, those glitches are not gonna happen all the time. That's uh, an odd kind of rare thing, but they do happen and it's really annoying when it does happen. So hopefully it won't be today. <laughs> all right, let's pull a shot. Here we go. Again, 20 second pre-infusion, maybe about 45 second shot time. So everything all together should be about a minute. Yeah, so that means 40 second shot time. Okay, I had to readjust the cup. Hopefully we don't get, we don't get a glitch there. All right, here we go. We're gonna start with the paddle at five o'clock.
Okay, here comes the pressure. Level it off somewhere around three bars. Okay, we got first drip. Okay, and 20 seconds in, we ramp up to nine bars. Nice and slow. Wow, that worked to perfection, just like, uh, just like on that cinematic clip. It was pretty perfect. Just like on the one on the niche zero where I got it just right. Okay, so we're looking for a, a one to 2.5 ratio. So that means uh, 18 in, 45 out. Okay. All right, so I just noticed one of my cameras stopped. It's telling me something about the memory being full. I doubt that. But I think I should have at least gotten the beginning of the shot pulling. <laughs> Maybe I didn't get all of it. I'm sorry, I apologize if that happened. Uh, now I'm gonna have to put out here on the screen the timing and stuff because <laughs> it timed out, everything went away before I could really take a look, a look at it. But we'll, we'll talk, you know, I'll put it here. I'll put it here on the, let's taste it. I think, <laughs> I think that shot worked out pretty much just as planned. So let's go to the other counter, taste it. And man, that's unfortunate. I didn't get a chance to take a look at all of that. But anyways, you guys see it here on the screen. Did I get it right? <laughs> Was it 20 second pre-infusion and about a 40 second shot, one minute overall. I think that 45, grams was pretty much right spot on so i think i got that part pretty much spot on and i think everything worked out perfectly so let's go to the other counter and taste it all right so here it is let's give it a swirl nice aroma wow if you guys haven't tried this one you know, you gotta give it a try. It's sweet, but you do get that upfront acidity, then it rounds off, becomes smooth, sweet. Somewhat like a classic kind of taste because you, you get that caramel and chocolate. Maybe it's like a brown sugar. Yeah, and I don't know if it's the red current. I don't, I don't know. That berryness that I find in it, that little tartness, which is what I attribute to the acidity, it's just wonderful. It's a great combination of flavors. You know, it's not an expensive coffee either. And wow, I find this to be, just to drink straight shots, maybe my favorite one. Is the combination of like classic taste with the little berryness and acidity that just does something, you know? Try it out, it's, it's great. So you guys saw my first take on the duel. Uh, oh, something else somebody uh, mentioned was that maybe I take too long between like locking in my Pota filter and actually pulling the shot. And that could be so, it takes me a few seconds to set up all the cameras, maybe like a couple of minutes, that's kind of long. I wish I could, you know, <laughs> I don't know how else I could do it if I want to film everything. But I don't know. Do you guys find there to be a difference? Like when you lock in your porta filter, I imagine you probably start pulling your shot pretty much right away. That's what everyone would do. Um, and when I'm not filming, that's what I do. But I got to say, I don't notice. I don't notice any difference. Uh, it's not like I enjoy the shot more when I like pull it right away than when I wait a couple minutes. To me, there's not, uh, if there's any kind of, you know, I would need to do that test like side by side and taste the coffee side by side to maybe be able to detect some kind of difference because to me, I've never noticed. I've never noticed like some kind of different taste because I'm taking long to start pulling the shot. Cheers, I hope you guys brewed something tasty to go along with me here. So yeah, nice chilly morning. I think I'm gonna go for a, for a walk. Mm. Wow, what a wonderful shot. I wonder if it slowed down. Was it, <laughs> was it uh, more than 35 seconds? I think in the cinematic it was 35 seconds uh, from first drip. Today, I, I, I don't know. Uh, 
Anyway, you guys know, because I put it on the screen, I don't, but regardless, it worked on my favor. This is spot on, this is perfect. I don't have to tweak it any further. So I have to make a note of it. If I want to brew this again with the niche duel, with the espresso burrs, I have to be at three and a half. You know, I hadn't uh, heard a, a, anyone say that there's like a short range of, you know, of numbers to pull the espresso shots. Like I said, I think, you know, I have very little experience so far, but from the looks of it, I would say that we're going to end up with maybe like 10 clicks of usable kind of distance. That's plenty though. That's plenty. With a stepless grinder that you can make such a small amount of tweaks, that's going to be way more than enough. Mm. Wow, this is delicious. Sad to see you go, buddy. Wow. Mm. You get that little tartness with all those flavors coming. The, you know, the sugar, the that caramel, kind of sweet caramel flavor. But the berryness, just, I don't know, I think it's perfect for straight shots of espresso. Uh, you know, by the way, this is my... Uh, the mic, I just put it here right in front of me, see how this sounds. If I clip it on the shirt today, you know, when I wear the black shirt that has the little opening, I can clip it and it works perfect. But with this thing on, it kind of goes off to the side and I don't think it's gonna sound great. So I just put it in front of me here on the, on the counter. So I hope that you guys had a little bit of fun here. I think it's gonna probably end up being somewhat of a short video, but hopefully I was able to keep you company here for a few minutes. Uh, maybe you learn a thing or two, maybe you got a laugh here and there, uh, comment below, uh, at least give me a thumbs up, and let me know if you want me to look into anything else as to espresso and the niche duo before I go to the blue burst and then we experiment with that. Of course I can go back and forth, so don't, you know, if, if you see this video and it's been weeks since I posted it or months or whatever, it's still coming. Comment and uh, eventually I'll go back and forth with the, with the burst sets. That's the reason why I got both, right? If not, what's the point? So for sure we can go back and forth. So comment something below. Please give the video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I'm so glad that you guys spent this time here with me today. And you know, I appreciate you guys a whole bunch. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next Sunday.